Hello everyone, my name is Vadim Mikhalenka from Online Training for Everyone. And today I would like to share with you interesting questions you are very likely to come across on the test. With each question, I will share with you the answer, and if there is a pattern, I'll explain you how to detect it as well. If you are getting ready for the test, make sure to watch this video from the beginning to end to learn the key concepts and the way to find the solutions for the different problems. And if you pay attention to the questions and answers, I can guarantee you that it will increase how quickly you can solve each problem on your own. My goal is to explain you the solutions and to help you detect the patterns. I'm going to ask you for a favor. And no, not to subscribe to this channel, even though this is something you might consider doing as well. But if you see a different way of solving the challenge, please share it in comment sections so we all can learn. And also, if you know other test questions that you'd like us to cover in the future videos, please share them in comments. Let's go ahead and get started. A lot of times, you might get a question which asks you to determine the sales increase. You're typically presented with the graph, which shows lines that represent different sales. In our case, we are represented with the chart that shows sales of cardio equipment from January to June, sales of bikes represented by the blue line, sales of elliptical represented by the orange line, and sales of treadmills are represented by the gray line. The question asks you to determine largest sales increase. Specifically, you need to determine which period represents the largest one month's number of item sales increase for cardio equipment sales. You have four different choices. Choice A, bikes, from January to February. Choice B, bikes from February to March. Choice C, ellipticals, March to April. And choice D, treadmill, May to June. Do you see the answer? You may need to look closely to determine the correct answer for this question. Give yourself five to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the right solution. Are you ready? We're going to move forward and cover the answer for this problem and get to the solution together. To answer this question, we need to look at the graph closely. For each data point on the graph, we need to determine the actual value. And once we have all the numbers, we need to answer the question by looking at the differences for equipment sales from months to months. Specifically, in this case, you need to evaluate four different choices that are represented by answers A through D. Let's do it together. Based on the chart, bike sales increased by 2 from January to February, and the increase was from 5 to 7 items sold. Bike sales also increased by 2 from 7 to 9 between February and March. Elliptical sales, on the other hand, increased by 7 from March to April, jumping from 2 to 9. And treadmill sales increased by 4 between May and June, going up from 2 to 6. So the correct answer here is choice C, elliptical sales from March to April, because jump was by seven from two to nine. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the interesting question, which is easy to understand, but at the same time, you will have a lot of fun solving it. You need to calculate the simple expression, 12 divided by two and then multiply it on the value in parentheses, which is 3 minus 1. Take a look closely and see if you can come up with the answer. There are three operations here, division, multiplication, and subtraction. All you need to determine is which one to do first, second, and third. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue and get it solved together. The order of operations in math tells us that the first expression we need to solve is in parentheses. We first need to calculate 3 minus 1. And obviously, the answer is 2. The big question is, what do we do next? The order PEMDAS tells us that we need to do multiplication and division. But what order doesn't mention is that we need to do it from left to right. And what's interesting, the acronym itself is a little bit confusing because it shows multiplication first and then division. But in our case, we need to do division first 
and divide 12 by 2, and then do multiplication. Once we divide 12 by 2, we get to 6, and the final expression we need to solve would be 6 multiplied by 2. So the correct answer here is 12. Let me give you a quick hint. Even if you don't know the answer, you can always use a calculator. Most modern calculators do support expressions. Let me demonstrate. For example, if you type calculator in Google, it shows the calculator which you can use to solve the expressions. You can preview expression and once you hit the equal sign, it calculates it for you. And you can see that the correct answer here is 12. Another alternative is to use Microsoft Excel, which is available on almost any Windows machine. Here you can enter the expression right inside any cell. And Microsoft Excel will perform the calculations. So did you solve this challenge on your own? Was it easy for you? Please share your thought process and your solution in the comment section of this video. Here's the interesting question that might get you puzzled. You need to explain why the calculation that you see is correct. And you have a calculation 1 plus 1 equals 10. Give yourself 10 seconds and let me give you a hint. Try to think out of the box and try to see what else can be going on here besides just the calculations. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. Typically, when we do calculations, we use 10 digits in the decimal system. We use 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. But here, calculations are done in the binary system. And there are only two digits in the binary system, 1 and 0. So what happens when you get calculation in the binary system and you add 1 plus 1, what looks 10 in the decimal system looks like 2 in the binary system. So the correct answer, this calculation is possible because of the binary system. Let me demonstrate this to you. If you launch calculator in Windows and then switch to the programmer calculator, you can choose different systems. By default, it's a decimal system. But if we switch to binary and then we can add 1 plus 1 equals what looks like 10, in reality, is 2 in the binary system. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of times you get tested on your ability to analyze charts and graphs. In this question, we see a pie chart, which is broken down into two parts. You see parts presented in the different colors, white, red, blue, gray, and black. And the question asks you how many cars. Let's read the question more carefully. The pie chart shows the colors of the cars past traffic light in one hour period. A total of 250 cars pass the traffic light. The number of white cars is represented by an angle of 90 degrees. Approximately how many white cars pass the traffic light? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 57. Choice B, 60. Choice C, 63. And choice D, 67. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution and solve this challenge together. A lot of times, answer given to you as part of the question. And this is one of those cases. Pie chart is represented by a 360 degree circle. We know that 90 degree angle represents number of white cars past the traffic light. And 90 degrees is a quarter of 360. To do the calculations, you need to divide 90 by 360, which is a quarter or 0 0.25. We need to build the proportion to calculate the final value. If total number of cars past the traffic light is 250 and it's represented by a 360 degree circle, to calculate the number of white cars passed, we need to multiply 250 by 0 0.25. So the end result is 62.5.
the closest value among the answers is 63. So the correct choice here is choice C, 63. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I'm very excited to share with you this question, which we frequently see on the test. Despite being tricky, you will have a lot of fun trying to find the answer. This is one of those questions that is easy to understand and it challenges your brain and improves your IQ. It also tests your imagination, spatial thinking, logical thinking and attention to details. Take a look at the picture and see how many squares do you see. Think again. The answer might be more challenging than you think. Now might be the good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Give yourself about 10 seconds. This is typically how much you will get in the real test. Do you know the answer? Let me give you a tip. Keep in mind though that on the real test, most of the time you don't get any tips. But since we're doing it together, I'd like you to consider the possibility of one shape being inside the other. Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. There are 14 squares that can be identified in this picture. This definitely came as a big surprise to me. Do you see them all? Some of them might be much easier to identify than others. Let me draw them for you. There are nine small squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Even though small squares are easy to see and identify, let's look at the medium-sized squares. There are four of them. Number 10, number 11, number 12, and number 13. And then there is one large square. This is number 14. What do you think about this challenge? Were you able to solve it right away? In case you see some additional shapes that we missed, which is always a possibility, please make sure to share them in the comments of this video. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I'm extremely excited to share with you the question that tests your pattern recognition skills. You're presented with three columns. Each column has three numbers. In the first column, we see numbers 2, 7, 5. In the second, middle column, we see numbers 2, 3, and 4. And in the last, rightmost column, column number 3, we see numbers 10, 21, and then one number missing. You need to find the missing value, which is highlighted by question mark. You need to find the missing value, and you have four choices to choose from. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 16. Choice C, 27. And choice D, 36. Do you think you can recognize missing value? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. The most important skill to solve these types of problems is pattern recognition skill. To recognize the pattern, you need to look closely into each column. Selective values in columns 1 and 2 by multiplication get to the value in column 3. And this is our pattern. Let's take a closer look for the values that are already present. If we multiply 5 by 2, we get to the value of 10. Second set of values represented by the middle row. 7 multiplied by 3 equals 21. So the missing values here can be calculated by multiplying 2 by 4 and the end result would be equal to 8. So the correct answer to this problem is choice A, 8. I also wanted to share with you one of the typical mistakes people make as part of answering these types of questions. People start looking at the columns themselves. But unfortunately, there's no pattern just by looking in the values in column 1, since pattern just doesn't exist. If you look only at the values in column 1, or only at the values in column 2, or only at the values in column 3, you will not be able to come up with the answer. You have to look across 
and take a global view across multiple columns to get to the correct solution. Can you do me a favor? If you have a better way of solving this challenge, please share your thought process in the comment section of this video. I am excited to take advantage of the opportunity and share with you how to solve these types of problems on the test. Typically, when you get a problem, you need to determine which object does not belong to the group. In this particular case, you need to determine which square doesn't belong to the group. You are presented with four different squares, choices A, B, C and D. Each square contains two circles inside. In the large circle, quarter of each circle is missing and instead replaced with the small circle. All squares also have triangles in the corner. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. The key to solving this challenge is to detect the pattern. This is the skill that you need to develop to be successful in the test. Because there are two shapes here present in this question, triangles and circles, you should try to detect pattern among triangles and then among circles. In this particular question, there is only one pattern, pattern of the triangles. But there are some sophisticated questions in the test which might include patterns for both shapes. In this particular case, the pattern is that the square should contain the equal number of black and white triangles in the corners. Triangles in the square A positioned diagonally across each other. White triangles are located in the upper left corner and in the bottom right corner. And black triangles are located in the bottom left corner and in the upper right corner. You can see that the same pattern exists in the shape B, two white triangles and then two black triangles. And in the shape C, two black triangles on the left and two white triangles on the right. But if we look at the choice D, you see that there are four black triangles in the corners. Circles in this picture do not have a pattern and their primary goal is to confuse you. If you look at the circles closely, you see that the large small circle pattern doesn't exist. We have black white, shape B black white, shape C white black and then shape D white white. Based on this information about the circles, we should ignore them and focus on the triangles inside the squares. This is why the odd shape, the shape that doesn't belong to the group, is the one that does not have equal distributions of all colors in the corners. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Very frequently on the test, you might be asked to detect the pattern. In this question, we're being asked which item comes next in the sequence. And we're presented with the sequence of items. Six items in the sequence are visible. 0, 2, 6, 12, 20 and 30. And the next item is missing. And you're being asked to select one of the four following choices. Choice A, 42. Choice B, 44. Choice C, 46. And choice D, 48. Do you see the answer? It may or may not be obvious, depending upon your skills of detecting the pattern. Like it or not, we're going to continue and I'll share with you the answer. As with any type of question, the key is to determine the pattern. To determine the answer in this particular case, you need to increment previous number by the greater even digit in the sequence. You can even come up with the formula. And in our case, the formula to determine the next number would be current number plus 2 multiplied by current position. Let's see how it works. For example, let's take the number 0. This is the first number in the sequence. To determine the next number in the sequence, we need to add previous number, which is 0, and then 2 multiplied by 1 because number 0 has the first position in the sequence. Instead of using the formula, you can also use the next even number and add it to the previous number. The even numbers are 2, 
four, six, and you can increment them down the list. So you can add two to zero. The next one would be four. Two plus four equals six. The next number would be six. Six plus six is 12. The next number would be eight. And 12 plus eight equals 20. The number after that would be 10. So 20 plus 10 would be 30. And the number after that would be 12. And 30 plus 12 equals 42. The correct choice here is choice A, 42. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I am very excited to present you with simple but at the same time very tricky question which tests your math skills as well as attention to details. Florist has 77 beautiful plants. All but seven were sold. How many plants are left? You have four different choices. Choice A, seven. Choice B, 77. Choice C, 70. And choice D, 84. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. The answer to this question is very simple. Seven plants are left. The answer is hidden in the tricky worded sentence, all but seven sold. So the correct answer here is choice A, seven. Hopefully you've read this question correctly, understood it very well, and solved it on your own. When you see a question like this, you might ask yourself, how can it possibly be even more confusing? But the reality is that the answer to the question I'm about to show you is very simple. Let's look in more details. You're presented with the three by three matrix. Two of the shapes in the matrix are missing. They are located in the bottom row. And you have four possible choices for the answers. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look. The solution is not obvious, but it is very simple. Give yourself 10 to 20 seconds, maybe go to 30 seconds by pausing this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Are you ready? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. As I mentioned, the answer to this question is very simple. The pattern is represented in each row by decreasing number of diamonds. Let's look at the top row. You see that the top left square contains four black diamonds. The middle square in the top row contains only three diamonds. And then the right square in the top row contains only two diamonds. In the second row, the pattern reverses and it goes from right to left. And you see the same pattern of the white diamonds. Four goes down to three and then goes down to two. So in the bottom row, we need to follow the same pattern. The pattern will be the number of diamonds decreasing from four to two among the gray diamonds. So the correct answer here is choice A. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. I'm excited to share with you a cool question, which is easy to understand, but which doesn't have an obvious answer. You're presented with the two by three matrix. This matrix has arrows inside. There are two types of arrows, solid arrows, and then there are arrows that consist of three different shapes. There are six possible spaces in the two by three matrix. Five shapes are present and one shape is missing. You're presented with four different choices to identify the missing shape, which is highlighted by the question mark. You have choices A, B, C, and D. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can identify the right answer. Did you figure out the correct answer? Let's continue to see if we can get to the correct solution together. To solve these types of challenges, you always need to look for patterns. And there are three different patterns present in this sequence. Let's look at the pattern one. If we start from the upper left corner and go clockwise, you see that the arrows change alternatively in each subsequent box. Second pattern is that inside the box, solid arrows rotate clockwise. And then the third pattern, which is a little harder to identify, is that the previous arrow points to the next arrow start. This is why the missing part, the part that you would need to identify, contains an arrow placed in the right corner pointing to the left. So the correct answer here is choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. But in case you need more problems and solutions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video.
the types of questions you're looking at, is very frequently used on a test. Typically, you're being asked to determine the item which does not belong to the group, and you're presented with multiple items. In our choice, we have choices A, B, C, and D. Each item is represented as a square which contains multiple different items inside, and you need to determine the item which does not belong to this particular pattern or sequence. Do you see the answer? Please take a look to see if you can come up with the solution. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds, maybe 10 to 20 seconds, to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? Let's continue to see how we can go and get to the correct solution together. As you might have figured out by now, there is always a pattern that you need to detect to answer these types of questions correctly. And a lot of times, there are items that are designed to confuse you. So let me first walk you through the items that are designed to confuse you. You have small circles, and there are four small circles in each of the square. And the small circles do not have any patterns. We also have triangles. Some squares have two triangles, and some squares only have one. But there is no pattern here. The pattern is actually defined by the half circle. And as you can see, all half circles are attached to the corners of the square. You see this in the shapes A, B, and C. But in shape D, half circle is placed in a different location. It is in the bottom middle of the square. This is why the item that doesn't belong to the group is the choice D. So the correct answer here is choice D. Let's recap. The pattern here is that all half circles are attached to the corners of the square. But half circle in the shape D is placed in a different place than the others. The half circle there is in the lower part of the square. This is why the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is the very interesting question from the real test some of you might find challenging. Despite being tricky, you will have a lot of fun trying to find the solution. Because this question tests your imagination spatial thinking, logical thinking, and attention to details. Please take a look at the picture and identify all triangles in this picture. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be the right time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Give yourself about 10 seconds. This is typically about as much time you'll get on the real test. Did you come up with the answer? Let me give you a tip. Keep in mind, though, that in the real test, nobody is going to give you any suggestions. But make sure to consider the possibility of one shape being inside the other. Now let's continue to see if we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. It is mind-boggling, but there are 35 triangles here. Can you believe it? certainly was a huge surprise to me as I was discovering them. Let me draw all of them for you. I will start by drawing small border triangles. There are 10 of them. Please count with me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now let's do next 10 triangles. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And now let's do next five. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Another five. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and then the last five, 31, 32, 33, 34, and the last one is 35. Do you think we missed any? Please make sure to leave your comment and let us know if there is even more. Hopefully you nailed this question. And now, learn how to answer similar questions on the test.
This is one of my favorite questions, and there is a very high chance that you will get it on the assessment test. How many triangles do you see? You're presented with the shape on the left. There is a large triangle, and there are also lines inside of this large triangles. You have four different choices. Choice A, nine triangles. Choice B, 12. Choice C, 17. And choice D, 24. One triangle is highlighted in red, but there are a lot of other triangles. Do you think you know the answer? Give yourself a few seconds. I would recommend 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time as you will get in the real test. You can pause this video to give yourself some time to figure out the answer. I am going to continue and reveal the correct solution so we can get to the answer together. I counted 12 triangles in this picture. Is this what you got too? Let me show them all for you. I'll start with the smaller triangles and then go to the medium-sized ones and then go to the large ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Did you come up with the different answer? Please share your thought process in the comment section of this video so we can all learn from your perspective. Hopefully you nailed this question and got to the correct answer on your own. I had this question being asked as part of consulting job interview. How many seconds are there in a year? Take a look at the picture. It might give you a hint. Do you think you know the answer? Think of the logic, how would you calculate how many seconds are there in the year? Or maybe there is an alternative. Always try to think out of the box. This would be my hint to you. And give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. This is as much time as you might get answering these types of questions in the test. Now let's continue and get to the correct solution together. Obviously, this is a tricky question and it challenges you in understanding of the word second. There are two meanings in the word second. One is second, for example, one minute has 60 seconds. But second one is second, where you have sequence of first and second. And the second meaning of the second is used in this particular question. So if we go back to the question, in the year there are 12 months, and there are 12 second days. One second day in each month. January 2nd, February 2nd, March 2nd, and etc. Hopefully you've nailed this question, it gives you some laugh, and you now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for your endorsement, support, and patronage. Please also check out additional resources in the description section of this video. I also encourage you to check resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net. Please leave your feedback, corrections, or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.